using the uh, premium configuration. Okay, this is a four axis part. You could uh, possibly do it in four axis, uh, but the complicating factor here is that, uh, that surface, uh, that cam surface, if you will, uh, that is not readily machined uh, using our four axis methods. Uh, so the way we have, we have chosen to machine, I'll go through this, we've already machined it. I don't want to go into that in too much detail, but I'll just show you the tool paths and how they work. Um, oh, one other note that I should make is five axis. You're, when we talk about five axis machining, uh, you're always going to be using that in combination with three axis methods because there's a lot of power in locking the tool axis and machining with, uh, with the lock tool axis. And there's a lot of toolpath methods we have in three axis, three axis that you can leverage. And so um, seldom will you machine everything using five axis. So, uh, so there's always a combination. Uh, so here, uh, what we have done is we have done a horizontal roughing. Let me run the simulation real quick. I want to simulate to end. So turn off the toolpath. So we've done that. And then we flipped it over since it's a rotary, we can flip it over very easily and then machine the bottom portion. And notice again, this is done using the three axis methods uh, and of course using the index three axis methods. And then for the top part, for that little index part that you saw, we machined using again, three axis. And then did a chamfer to remove that uh, chamfer operation. So this, all of this is three axis methods. So until, until here, we have three axis method. Now we're, we're when to get to the rotary part. Uh, we are actually jumping into some uh, four axis methods as well. So we're using quite a bit of combination of four axis. We just clean that, clean that up. Let me show you the tool path. So we use the four axis uh, face off operation, if you will. And then we also use four axis uh, engraving operation to actually clean up the sides uh, to get that like that. Um, okay, and now just to get to the, I wanted to show you the difference between our four axis methods. We, we do have something called four axis um, a drive surface machining uh, that allows you to do some the machine something like that. But this is the only cut pattern you're gonna be getting when you use that. As you can see, there's a lot of retracts. And uh, the reason that happens is because it's it's checking against these, uh, we machine everything we see in four axis. So it's actually checking against these geometries and picking up because of the gouges that are happening. Uh, but in the uh, premium method, we, we have this flow curve machining that gives you a really nice tool path, as you can see. It's a really nice pocketing type of toolpath flowing about that surface and uh, very nicely cleaning the corners and things like that. Let, let me run the simulation. Start the simulation. So, I mean, obviously where the tool is not going like that, it's the machine tool. I'm gonna run to end. Okay, there you go. So that's a very nice toolpath. And here we have used the four axis uh, mode uh, in the premium configuration to actually machine it. I'll show you the parameters real quickly. We used the four axis configuration and we used the drive curve method, a single drive curve. We used the entire set of curves as a single drive curve, not necessarily a, a contiguous curve, uh, but uh, the system actually combines all of those curves to a single curve. So that uh, shows you an example of where we can use a five axis method to actually machine a four axis part.